Welcome, everybody. It is Super Tuesday, March the 5th, and boy, has it been an interesting day already. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get after it. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, folks, it is Super Tuesday. It is election day for the primaries, and consequently, today, of all the days, Facebook, Instagram, basically the entire meta universe completely went down worldwide for several hours, uh, and it has sparked all kinds of quote-unquote conspiracy theories. Uh, they're already, listen, the mainstream media is already publishing everything to combat the quote unquote conspiracies centered around this event. For example, Express News, along with some other American affiliates, said that, quote, people have taken to X, formerly known as Twitter, to suggest that the Facebook and Instagram outages are linked to the Super Tuesday primaries taking place later today. Andy Stone, who's a communications director at Meta, posted on X, formerly Twitter, stating that, quote, we are aware that people are having trouble accessing our services. We are working on this now. Now, guys, we want to we're going to cover this a little bit, but this is not even really what I really wanted to talk about today. What I really want to talk about is and it, it coincides with this. But listen, the, the way of, um, of the American life. And the Western life is changing rapidly. There are things that we report on week after week after week that are that it, it, it doesn't take much to shock me anymore, but it is it's getting to the point where the shock factor is beginning to wear off. And the America that we once knew, the Western civilization that we once knew, is completely changing. And we are seeing tyrannical dystopian events taking place in this country that I cannot believe that we're repeating history again. We're moving in a direction that I thought we would never go back to or repeat in history. And we are doing this. Um, before we get started, guys, I want to encourage you again, end time headlines. That's, that's who we are today. If you're new to the broadcast, we're End Time Headlines, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Uh, we have a website, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. We have a free app. Uh, you can get it today on Apple and Android. Just go to your Play Store. If you're listening by Apple or by Spotify, we welcome you to the broadcast. Go there, type in End Time Headlines, look for our official ETH logo. And uh, once you get the app, and just hit yes to push notifications. You're going to be good to go. For you guys that are watching the visual of this, we welcome you. Rumble, uh, uh, YouTube, whatever the case would be, uh, Telegram. Again, in the description of this video, you're going to see a link. It says download this, uh, download our free app. You can get your app today. This is how we, I want you to do this so you can keep up with our ministry. Again, we're slowly uh, weaning off of and, and leaving major platforms. We're still on Facebook to put out like uh, announcements and every now and then I might post something, but we're not, not articles, but like a, an opinion or something. But as far as all the articles and all that, we don't share there anymore. Uh, we, at least for the next 12 months, whether or not we come back, I don't know yet. I haven't decided if I'm even coming back to Facebook. We've replaced Facebook with Telegram. Um, we'll give you more information about that at the end of this broadcast. I want to get right into what we're talking about today, but again, consequently, um, I, I knew I was going to have to talk about this today. Again, all of the, the whole meta universe, Facebook, Instagram, snap, I believe it was Snapchat. I don't know all of the services that went down, but we know the biggest main ones were Facebook and Instagram. And again, they just so happen that it coincides with Super Tuesday Election Day. But I'm sure, listen to me, as, as sure as I'm sitting here today talking to you, 
I'm sure Zuckerberg and all of his team will come out and assure every one of you, especially all the lemmings and the sheep, he will assure them that it was simply a glitch. It was simply a, um, maybe he'll take the the same page as AT&T did. You know, when all the outage happened and it was a software glitch. It was an update in their system and it just happened to shut everything down. So I'm sure this is what they're going to say because this is what they always say when this stuff happens. It can never be it can never be a cyber attack. It can never be a conspiracy. It can never be a test run, a dry run. It can never be any of that. And if you even assume that or insinuate that, then of course you're a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. But don't miss the point. The reason why I'm bringing this up, guys, I'm telling you, the, all the forces at hand are working overdrive. They are working overdrive to, to reshape our country into something that they, are, they have dreamt about for years. And now all these organizations are in collaboration together to bring about their dreamed utopia. Come on, they've been telling us this. We know this. They, they've, been, they've been warning us about this. They've been telling us this. They, they make it public anymore. It's not hidden somewhere behind a boardroom anymore or behind a curtain or some secret meeting anymore. It's right out in the open. Breaking news. You ready? Uh -oh. Facebook is down on Super Tuesday. Okay? A lot of people are logged out. I just went on my Facebook right now, and I'm logged out. So is Rob. Can you guys check to see if you've been logged out from Facebook? your Facebook? Just go on your phone, Tom. I'm, see if your uh, Facebook. I'm logged out. You're logged out. See if, see if it says session, session expired. expired. Oh, wow. They don't want nobody on Super Tuesday talking about what's happening. Well, no, it's not. I'm, I'm, we're not. I'm just saying the timing, Rob Whoa. said it's a very. Yeah, yeah. me too. You, by the way, for people that are watching, are you also logged out? Can you just go check your Facebook? And if you're but logged what out, about put Instagram? here. Put here if you're logged out. Yeah, check Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't um, even let me log in with my password. Oh, I couldn't refresh the feed on Instagram. I'm, on Instagram, I'm right there with you. The feed. Is I'm like, everybody's seeing this just like this. Instagram is so, also. So you're, Instagram so, is so also you're saying down. the timing isn't isn't really weird well, right all now? All I'm saying, it's a little weird. But let's sure, see what's going on here. Weird, Facebook yeah. and Instagram down during outage. Thousands affected. Well, five people here are affected. So uh, <laughs> if you were just kicked out of Facebook weird. or Instagram while scrolling, you're not alone. Meta social platform are currently not working. With yeah. both Instagram oh. and Facebook pulling up uh, failure to load error pages, go a little lower. Come on. And uh, down to tech to report at 44,000 outages at 1013. It's 1048 right now. So it was 30 minutes ago. Eight on your side uh, has reached out to Meta. What? What is the eight on your side? Oh, the show has reached out. So go on Twitter. Go on Twitter <laughs> and let's see what Twitter is saying. Like, isn't it, isn't it a coincidence, though, that this is happening on this day? Well, I watched your interview with Eric Prince from Blackwater right after the day of the AT&T outage. Oh, and weird. you asked, what are the chances that China was responsible for that? Despite AT&T and the cell phone service saying that was their bad. Look. He said, what was the number he said, Pat? 70%? 70 percent. 70 percent. I don't know, good. dude. Uh, these things are popping up more and more. And but, but, number but, one trending hashtag on Twitter right now is Facebook down. And Adam, I, I understand that angle, but what yeah. about just them going, hey, let's just not let anybody speak or share or do anything on a major platform? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, if this anything. was a general election, your theories would hold water. But this is well, a it's primary, not a, it's not a meaning, it's meaning a, those people are voting for Trump. It's well, happening. No, but That's saying, not like, oh, my God, Nikki Haley won all 16 states. That would be a problem. No, but what I'm saying is the primaries. Not, are, Trump's got locked. It's up. not a theory. I'm, so I'm saying just, I'm just letting you know. Hey, hold on. General election, Trump Biden. I'm, not, I'm with you. I'm saying I'm saying yes. it's not a theory. I'm just saying, is it a weird coincidence that on Super Tuesday, which you brought up, I didn't even know it was Super Tuesday, the day after the Scotus, this has happened. This is it's weird, isn't it? A little weird. I, I, yes. But listen, these these same people, this the same group of of elites and people and organizations behind pulling all the strings, they are conforming every sector of the Western uh, civilization as we know it. The health industry, politics, even the education system. For example, and that's kind of where I want to go today. There has been not one, not there's been several cases now that has surfaced. Now this all started back. I'm going to, we're going to pull up a video. Um, and this and you've heard me say this. If you guys have been a, a a viewer or a listener for any time, any length of time, you will know that I have warned you 
that whatever happens in Canada, America is going to be, we're kind of on a delay. Now, when I say a delay, it's kind of like you, um, if you have a satellite broadcast, like, like a Dish Network or DirecTV, and you're watching something on there, you're going to get a live, I mean, like up to the minute feed or second feed, especially like you're watching a ball game and it's happening in real time. But then when you go into internet streaming, uh, these platforms like DirecTV Stream, YouTube TV, Hulu Live, uh, all these other streaming platforms, many times there's a delay, whether it can be five seconds or whatever. And and it's interesting. And that's kind of how I see this. Like, if you want to know where we're going as far as America goes, we need to look at our our neighbor in the north at Canada. Everything that happens there, everything that transpires there, all the government governmental tyranny that's taking place there. For example, let me give you an example real quick. You, uh, When we used to share stuff on Facebook, all of our Canadian brothers and sisters couldn't even see it. They, they were, they're not allowed to read it. It's been restricted by their government. And did you know, guys, that Facebook is tr- there? This is trickling down. And now there was an announcement recently where in which Zuckerberg announced that Facebook is moving away from the news platform. How convenient is that? They're moving away from the news platform. In other words, they don't want you to seek out and find alternative narratives and news sources they want to feed you and spoon feed you the exact narrative that they want you to receive this is why they're all in collaboration with one another google facebook uh instagram uh uh uh, even um uh what is it called because i don't even have it anymore uh I, well, I never TikTok. Even TikTok's on board with this. They're all in collaboration with one another to suppress the truth and to spoon feed you the narrative of what they want you to hear, receive, and the information that they want to give you. So it's not a surprise to me that they are again censoring, shadow banning, suppressing, and 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 altering algorithms and all that stuff on these platforms. Again, so that you can you your eyes and your ears will receive what they want you to see and what you want to hear. And if you know your history, does that sound familiar? Is there is there a regime? Is there a uh, administration in the past that did this with the media that controlled the media that controlled? The, the resources that were given, the control, the narrative, the control, the outcome, to control elections. Does that sound familiar in the past? I'm talking about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. So having said that, I want to take you to Canada. I want you to hear this story that, that surfaced out of Canada. And now, you know, typically it takes about two to five years for this stuff to come down into America. But lately it's an overdrive And when we see something happen in Canada, now it's taking weeks or even several months, and then it's right here knocking on our door in America. All right, here we go. Check this out. Canadian police arrested a father last week for violating a court order that banned him from speaking out about his daughter's gender transition. Here now to talk with us more about that is Dan Andros of FaithWire.com. So, Dan, how did this court order come about? Yeah, well, uh, Ephraim, in January of last year, this Canadian father uh, went to... Now, by the way, this was in 2022 when this happened. So this was two years ago. And I know that's a, it's a little bit old. It's 24 months old. But there's a, there's a reason why I'm showing you this. Because we, you know, as Americans, we read this and, and we, we kind of glaze over because it doesn't affect us, per se, because we're Americans and this is Canada. But wait till I show you what's happening. The court, after learning his daughter was undergoing hormone therapy, uh, transitioned to transition to a boy. Um, The child whose uh, name has been protected and not used uh, claims to have been exploring this uh, transition since before she was a teen. Now, the family has had some personal issues. The mother and father had split. Uh, and she was beginning to hang out with some kids at school that the father said were a bad influence, and she was getting into trouble. Uh, But perhaps most disturbing in all of this 
the school counselor had changed the child's name without even telling the father. Now, did you hear that? The school's counselor changed the name without even notifying the father. Again, this, again, this started in Canada. Now you're hearing about this in America. This has happened in America. We would never think that this would happen in America, but it's right at our doorstep, guys. Listen to the rest of this. Uh, and the school socially transitioned the biologically female child uh, on its own initiative uh, with, with the input of a gender ideologue psychologist there at the school. And so when Wow, could you imagine? Could you imagine your child going to school and this happened to your child without your consent, without your knowledge? How would you react to this? Well, we're about to see what happens when there's a reaction. When he went to court, then the judge ruled that the father couldn't use uh, the the new pronouns uh, of the preferred pronouns of this child. Absolute insanity. A judge ruled that the, 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 the child's own father couldn't call his daughter by her birth name and her gender. This is absolute insanity. And again, <clears throat> this is not just Canada, friends. It's now here in America. As, we're gonna, as we move on, we'll show you more about this. What did the judge tell this father? Uh, yeah, so the, the B.C. Court of Appeals uh, ruled that the father couldn't voice that opposition, as I uh, mentioned. And the chief justice there said the dad's refusal to accept his teenage daughter's uh, choices was troublesome, uh, adding that his failure to fully endorse his kid's desire uh, for irreversible transgender treatments had caused the minor significant pain uh, that had resulted in a rupture of what both parties refer to as an otherwise loving uh, parent-child relationship. So, uh, stop. The key word there is minor. A minor means they're not capable of making these types of decisions, friends. They're not fully developed. M my goodness, this is ridiculous. A minor, not this is not a full-grown adult. This is a minor that is not capable of making those kind of changes. They're still develop. They're in the developmental stages. And yet this judge, this tyrannical judge in Canada ruled against the father, the own father, had nothing to say about the school doing whatever they want to do with the kids without the, without the uh, permission of the parents. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So uh, they seemed more disturbed uh, about the father's response to this uh, than, the, than the child's transition. Wow. We understand this child started identifying as a male at age 11 and is now 15. What led to the decision? Uh, yeah, so as I had mentioned, those, those family problems had manifested themselves, and so she was seeing a school counselor. Now, during those counseling sessions, that's when uh, the father later learned uh, that the child had been shown uh, these videos that he said amounted to nothing more than a gender uh, propaganda videos and so whoa so this school is directly responsible for this but yet nothing's going to be done about it no consequences no repercussions this is where we're at friend this is where we're at friend and you wonder everybody wonders why we're like lord please come back lord please split the eastern sky lord please sound the trumpet today because people are sick and tired of this nonsense no wonder the Bible called Lot a righteous man who was vexed by the, the daily filthiness of the conversation of the wicked and the things in which he saw and what he was exposed to daily. I get it. I understand it. The word vexed means to be weighed down, oppressed. It, this stuff wears you down. It oppresses you. It makes you, because you, our hands are tied. All we can do is seek the Lord. All we can do is pray. All we can do is still, we got to remain faithful. We got to remain steadfast. We got to remain true to the word of God. And there's going to be consequences to it. But we've been warned about these, friend. We've been warned the day would come when, they, when all men will hate you for my name's sake. Listen, who do you think the biggest proponents of defending your, your actual gender is? And the biblical stance of marriage is, uh, hello, it's going to be 
Bible-believing Christians. So it's no wonder that this group is the ones who are being uh, <clears throat> ridiculed, blasted, and just laughed to scorn. It was through the watching of these videos and the guidance of the school counselors and the gender ideologues uh, that they sort of pushed this, according to the father, on the child, and that's what sort of led uh, to to this desire to uh, transition. That's absolutely disgusting. That's that's, and so that's not child abuse, but the father calling his daughter a biological girl by what she really is. That's child abuse. Unbelievable. Isaiah spoke it well when he said the day would come when they would they would speak evil for what is good and they would call good evil and exchange light for darkness. What's been the father's response to all of this? Well, the, the father is devastated and he and he has maintained that he's not going to to, you know, cave and and call his daughter good for uh, you. a boy or a he. Um, and so he's been staying firm on that and he really see, says that it's it's um uh, dangerous that these are irreversible decisions he said she can never go back to being right. a girl in the healthy body that she should have had she's going to forever have a lower voice she'll forever have to shave because of facial hair she won't be able to have children mm -hmm. uh, the father has accused the government of quote state sponsored child abuse good that's it's sad. And all we can do, guys, is pray for this young, young woman going in. She's 15. But now she's she's 17 years of age. So she's still a minor. But we need to pray. We'll lift her up at the end of this broadcast and pray that she comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, because though we can't change the outward. Come on, the inward man. She can be born again. Come on, that's that's what matters above all else, okay? So listen, the devil would like to come along and try to say, you've done it, you've lost, you, it's irreversible, you can't, you'll never be the same. But come on, the devil is a liar, and God can turn and turn what was what intended for evil and make it for good. Come on, do you believe that today? Then you had this story. I don't know if you remember this story. This one came out last year. This was absolutely horrific. Now, this was not in Canada. It was not in Britain. This was right here in, in, in America, in California, where a Los Angeles mother absolutely slammed CPS after, listen to this, they took her daughter from her and they allowed her daughter to transition into a man. And eventually, this is what's tragic about this, the the young the young lady the young girl tragically took her own life 3 years later at the age of 19 so at 16 years of age cps took her from her own parents from her own home and then 3 years later she took her own life this is absolutely horrific a california mother has claimed that her 19 year old daughter was and she uses the word murdered by, quote, gender ideology after the CPS removed her own daughter from her home. This is in California. Removed her from her home. I don't know if you heard that in the back, but you need to hear that. You know, America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, it's not anymore. Come on, it, 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 the whole face of America is changing rapidly. We don't have these freedoms anymore. Freedom of speech, what a joke. Freedom of religion, what a joke. Look at this. Abigail Martinez stood before the California Judiciary Senate uh, to blame gender ide ideology, excuse me, for taking her own daughter's life. Her daughter uh, died by suicide in September of 2019. So this took place several years ago. This was when all this started to fold around. Can you believe, uh, even back in 2019, this was going on, but... Again, you don't hear much of this because the mainstream media just kind of wants to kind of skip over that and focus on everything else. But this is happening right under our nose. Three years after CPS removed her from her mother's home. Now, there's a really important part right here. I want to show you this. Look what the mother said here. Quote, tell me if this doesn't sound familiar. The school was telling her, that's her daughter, to go to these LGBT groups behind my back. Let me say it again. The mother 
of this young girl who took her own life. And here's a picture of her, guys. I mean, it's just sad. Beautiful young lady and all this it just, and, and lost to this. And this mother, the mother here, said that the school behind her back was in uh, telling her to go to these LGBT groups. Does that sound familiar? That's exactly what was going on up in Canada. She went, according to the mother, she went from questioning her sexuality to her gender. At the hearing that took place, Martinez said her daughter was murdered by gender ideology. Wow, what a statement. Quote, CPS took my daughter when she was 16 years of age. It was helped by her public school counselor, an LGBTQ group, and another trans-identified girl. Quote, my daughter was taken from her loving home because the state of California claims that, quote, I was abusive for not affirming her trans identity. I lost my daughter over a name and pronouns. Think of that, friend. Think about it. So this young lady went from this to that. Again, from this to this before she took her own life. Martinez said her daughter began questioning her gender identity when she entered high school and joined an LGBTQ club where she met a friend who also identified as a boy and suggested that Yaley's, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, Yaley's depression could be from her actually being a boy. And the mother, again, the mother told this publication this. So again, this is where this seed was dropped. Guys, this is demonic. It's a demonic influence that's working behind the scenes here. Remember, Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. This is absolutely demonic. And these schools are working hand in hand with demons. Now, come on. Now y'all see why I can't. This is what gets me shut down on Facebook. This is why I can't stream on Facebook anymore. But I'm going to keep preaching the truth if I'm on a box out of a desert somewhere. I'm, you're not going to shut me up. I'm going to keep speaking the truth. I'm going to preach what the Bible tells me to preach. I'm going to say what Jesus and the Holy Spirit inspires me to speak, whether you like it or not. So you can unfollow us. You can unlike us. You can do whatever you want to do. But we're going to still be here, and we're still going to be preaching until, come on, either I go here, we go there, or I go in the air. It don't matter to me. Let me read to you what Martinez, her mother, this is the mother, let me read what she said here. Quote, why are there so many transgenders in foster care? Because this state, now she's talking about the state of California, because this state takes them from their families, tells them to run, and then steals them. Parents are given one option to treat their distressed child, and that is affirm drugs and remove their healthy body part or else lose your child. Wow. Miguel Martinez had a daughter named Yaley. Her story started a lot like Ryan's, but it has a much sadder ending. It has been three years and 164 days since I lost my daughter. My daughter was not a boy trapped in a girl's body. She had mental health issues. Against my consent, my daughter was given testosterone instead of therapy. Mm. The damage was done. My then, my, by then, my daughter was in a horrible mental and physical pain. My daughter knelt down in front of a train. She was murdered by gender ideology. I beg you, stop pushing gender ideology. Abigail Martinez joins me now. Abigail, I'm so sorry about what happened to your daughter, Yaley. And just want to say we're all thinking about you and her right now. How exactly was Thank she you. given testosterone against your will? How the judge ordered, uh, because I was against, I was fighting for her to get mental health. And since, you know, every month we used to go to court and the judge said, uh, told me that, that they couldn't wait no more. So uh, they decide, she decided to sign in my behalf. Um, and that's how uh, everything started. So a California judge 
sided against you and separated your daughter from you, then what happened? Yes. Then she started with the treatment. I went uh, to Children's Hospital of LA uh, on her first appointment, and I asked the nurse, "What do you? When is she going to start therapy and you know get to know what she's going to be into?" Um, the nurse, the nurse told me, uh, "Okay, no, she just watched a video and that's it. Uh, she's going to start." Uh, her first shot uh, the next day. Whoa. Who's paying for that? That's what I want to know. So medical professionals... Simple as that. ...didn't yes. even explore uh, this at ask. all. They went full speed ahead to shots? Yes. Yes. Wow. Months yeah. later, my daughter was suffering of pain. Um, uh, her depression increased. So she had been shot up with testosterone. She's depressed. She's struggling. And did anybody in the hospital help her? Or did she just spiral out of everyone's sight? Yeah, no, nobody helped her. Nobody couldn't see that, uh, you know, the depression increased instead of, uh, you know, improve, like uh, she was tall. Because she believed all the lies that she was tall. Like uh, things were going to change, her depression was going to disappear. So she followed the, you know, their agenda, and trying no, to get better. And but, no one at the hospital anywhere warns you that there were side effects or this could happen? No, no, they don't tell them anything. I asked them and I asked the nurse, can you explain this to her? Because this is not going back. Once she's into, you know, the damage is going to be there for life. Oh, uh, and she told me, no, there's no damage. Uh, this is what she needs. Oh, wow. Unbelievable, guys. Listen, I mean, this is just, it's sad, but it, it's, this should anger you. This should anger you d d to know that this is happening. And <clears throat> it, this is terrifying. I, my kids homeschool. Um, we pulled, we made that decision a couple years ago. We're done with this nonsense because that is terrifying. I, I couldn't imagine sending my kids out not knowing what propaganda is being fed to them <clears throat> and even shots being put in their body. Wow. I mean, this is just, uh, uh, this is unbelievable. I mean, that sounds like medical malpractice. Yes. <clears throat> Have you considered litigation oh, yes. against the hospital? I, uh, yes, I am. Um, I don't know if, um, you know, the statutes of the, uh, the case is uh, done. I hire an attorney who just ruined my case. All right. Well, I mean, that's the only way this uh, stuff is going to get figured out unless, you, you know, you just got to sue the pants off these people because they only care about money, sadly. We, right. we feel terrible, Abigail, yes. for you. Your family, Yaley, seemed like a beautiful young girl who was just going through something. All young girls, young boys go through stuff. It didn't have to be this way. And, uh, and you're very brave for sharing the story with us. Thank you very much. So then we transition to the state of Indiana where this nonsense uh, just recently took place there as well, where uh, a, two cr uh, Christian parents, uh, uh, this couple, Mary and Jeremy Cox, had a daughter, and according to the report, this uh, third daughter suffered from an eating disorder. Uh, they, she had other underlying issues, and they refused to affirm her gender dysphoria. And, of course, state officials caught wind of this. They, they brought CPS in, and after learning that the Coxes would not use the preferred pronouns, they removed their daughter from their care. It, the report went on to say that the Indiana Department of Child Services initially claimed that the parents had not sought treatment for the eating disorder and were guilty of neglect and abuse. Despite these accusations, the government did not think it necessary to remove the other children. Eventually, the state admitted the allegations were false. Are you hearing me? However, the damage had already been done and their child was not returned. 
This all came after the fact that they took the child from their parents. Mr. and Mrs. Cox have been forced to take their state to court. So far, the Indiana Appeals Court and Indiana Supreme Court has rejected their appeals. This is in Indiana. I used to live in Indiana. Shame on you. I'm glad I got out of that state. No offense to you guys, but this is ridiculous. If all this nonsense is coming over this far, I mean, we are in trouble, friend. Now they're waiting to learn if the even if the U.S. Supreme Court will even hear their case. John Stone Street wrote, quote, the lawyers of state abuse in this state are staggering. First, there's a clear violation of the religious freedoms guaranteed by the First Amendment in the state's presumption to tell a religious community which beliefs are acceptable and which are not. There's also a violation of the rights of parents to raise their children according to their conscience and and the and, and the redefining of abuse and neglect to violate those rights. In the process, the state is essentially claiming that children belong first and foremost to the state and not to the parents. Wow. The state altered and manipulated laws designed to protect children to impose a false and harmful ideology. As the Cox's lawyer, Josh Hershberger des described in the article for World Magazine, the right and responsibility of parents, not the state, to raise their children according to their beliefs is a biblical pre-political principle that must be protected in state and federal law. Good luck with that. This case and others like it demand our attention and action. So friend, I, again, it is unbelievable that I have to come on here and talk about this. But this is where we're at in America. This is right at our front door, literally. So I want every parent to pay attention to this story. I don't care. Listen, I want every grand. Maybe you're you're not a parent, but maybe you through circumstances, you're you're watching your grandchildren and they are of school age. They're elementary age. They're of middle age uh, uh, children. They are of high school age. They're in some form or fashion of a of a of elementary, preschool, middle school, high school. And they're in your guardianship. You need to be paying attention to this. You need to know with, with a full assurance what you're sending them into every single morning when you pack their lunch, you get their backpacks, you get them dressed, and you send them out to these schools. What is being taught to them? What's being done behind closed doors? What's being propagated to them? And what is happening that you're not aware of? This is absolutely terrifying. And again, Please share this content. Get this out there. Uh, again, give it to your coworkers. Give it to your friends. Give it to your family, especially parents, grandparents. Again, guardian, uh, anybody who's a guardian over a child, because this is happening in America. And it's only going to get worse. It's only if you think it's going to get better, friends. Again, you live in a dystopian world that is, 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 is a fairy tale. Your head is buried in the sand. We are in the times of the end. We're in the last days. We're in perilous times. And again, this governmental tyranny that we keep hearing about, we keep reading about, and we it's always somebody else. Well, it's not my child. It's somebody else's. But eventually, friends, you have to wonder, is it going to come to your neck of the woods? So listen, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Again, don't forget to download our free app. It's available on Apple and Android devices. Um, again, download it. Hit yes to push notifications. Uh, and you're going to be good to go. You're going to get all of our content, and you're going to get it right there at your fingertips. Again, guys, don't forget to pray about becoming a monthly partner. If this ministry informs you, blesses you, equips you, uh, all of the above, we want you to pray about becoming, again, a monthly partner. You can do it two different ways. You can give electronically. The easiest way is through the app right there on your screen. Go to the bottom where it says donate of the app. If there's going to be a heart right there, you can just click there and you can give electronically or through the main website. You can also give by check or money order right there and make it out to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391. That's Monroe, Georgia, 30655. So, guys, um, let me give you a quick announcement and and we're going to let you go again don't forget to pray pray for these individuals pray for these 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 young girls and young boys that are being stripped from their parents we need to pray that they come to the salvation knowledge of jesus christ there can be procedures that can't be reversed but friends if they're born again though their outward man 
things can change with that, but it's the soul and spirit that we are as believers. That's what matters in the end, because this old flesh is going to go back into the dirt and the dust in which it came forth. But come on to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Our soul and spirit is going to depart our body one day. Okay, it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. So we need to be praying about that. And we're going to do a quick prayer real quick. Before we do that, guys, we've got some quick announcements. Listen, don't forget, we'll be off tomorrow. We typically take off Wednesday, so we'll be off Wednesday, March 6th. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll be back here on Thursday. I've got, a, um, I, I've got an equipping message I want to give you. Uh, and so be looking for that on Thursday. Again, that'll be the uh, on the 7th of March, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Again, if you're if you're coming from Facebook, we, we don't share content on Facebook anymore as far as our articles, our, our streams. They've completely restricted us from streaming. Find us on Telegram. Go. Find, we'll put the link in here. It's in the description of this. In the chat, we'll throw it up there. And again, just go there. Sign up an account. Follow us there. We've got we've got the main channel, which is End Time Headlines. And then we've got our group chat. And the group chat is wonderful. It's great. It's just like this chat here on YouTube. It's a bunch of believers that are like-minded. We have interesting conversations. Everybody, for the most part, gets along. You're always going to have a few bad eggs here and there, but that's anywhere. You get a bunch of people together, that's going to happen. So again, we would love to be for you guys to be a part of that. And we're, we're giving you all the, listen, we're giving you all the resources and all the tools you need uh, to keep up with our ministry. So we pray that you uh, will be blessed and encouraged and equipped and informed continually as we continue to be a voice crying in the wilderness. So right now, guys, what I want to do is I told you at the beginning of this broadcast, I wanted to specifically pray for that daughter in Canada that was stripped from her father and the father's devastated. We, let's just lift them and, and not only them, but let's include everyone out there. The, even the ones we've we've never met, we don't know about. It's under the radar. And this may hit home for you. Then maybe you got family members, some acquaintances, somebody's daughter, somebody's son. We want to pray for them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would intervene in these circumstances, God. Father, above all else, we pray, Lord, for the salvation of of those that are lost, for the daughters, for the sons, for those that don't know who they are in Christ. Lord, they are seeking and searching for their affirmation. They're looking for their identity, but Lord, it cannot be found in their sexuality. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It can only be found in Christ, in Christ alone. So above all else, I pray that they'd come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I pray that, Lord, you would penetrate every wall, every barrier, every demonic oppression, every lie of the enemy. Lord, every uh, every propaganda piece, every demonic entity that is working through counselors and people that's trying to propagate things against them. I pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'd penetrate all this nonsense, God, and that you would bring them, Lord, to a revolutionary encounter with Jesus Christ. Lord, that they would be wrecked and changed forever in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for every parent, every guardian, every every uh, uh, uncle, every aunt, every grandfather, every grandmother, whoever the guardians are over these children that are impacted by this. I pray that you'd give them the courage, give them the willpower, give them the strength, and give them peace about these circumstances and give them wisdom to show them how to navigate through these times so that, Lord, that you will prevail and that your word will speak the last word. And we pray this today in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen and amen. So guys, again, don't forget to hit, uh, hit that like button, hit that share button. Help us get our content out there on these platforms as much as possible. And until we see you guys on Thursday, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.